Okay, guys, what we're going to look at now is how you deliver your content. And by that, I mean, is it going to be all published so that students can work through it at their own pace, binge watch it in one go if they want to? Are you going to drip the content, which basically means release it on a schedule? Or do you want to lock the content so that students have to move ahead in a set order, you know, like through the modules without jumping ahead? You could also have it set up that it's locked by quiz assessment, okay, so that they have to pass some little test before you let them move on to the next module. Let's jump into my account and have a look. All right, so to properly explain dripping and locking of your course content, I've actually taken us out of that draft product we were in and over into a real product inside of my Kajabi account. So I've got this, uh, this course here, it was a beta course we did recently, Kajabi templates for passive income. And we've got 47 real students inside of this training. And then what I've done down here where the modules and the submodules are is I have set everything to draft so that I can explain this to you. Now, what I would do firstly is click this button to expand everything. Okay, so we can see the full course here. What I've got, I mean, this particular training was pretty much a mini course. It was run over five consecutive days. So I've got one main module and then inside of that I had a module for each day of our training okay so finding your niche if you're doing template design how to design if you're not a designer marketing your templates delivering your templates and then protecting your IP and other considerations now the first thing you're going to want to do if you've got the lesson ready for people to view okay um you know you're happy with it you don't need to make any further edits to it the lesson is done then i would go through and set the lessons to published okay because the option on lessons and quizzes is just draft or publish and it's very easy to forget to switch them from draft to publish and if you forget then students will log into their course and they're not going to see any content um, so come through and set all of your lessons that you're happy with to published just like this okay and then you need to decide what to do with the modules now for modules at module level and also at sub module level a module can either be draft it can be published it can be dripped which means that it's going to release on a schedule or you can lock a module. And by locking, you might say, you know, you can't move on to this module until you've completed the module before, or you can't move on to this module until you've passed a quiz from the module before, okay? So you can set the lock up in different ways and we'll have a look at that a little bit further later on. Um, so what I'm going to do is say, all right, when people get access to this product, I want them to be able to see the main course structure immediately okay that main parent module so that one's going to be published and the first day of content I would like them to be able to see that day immediately as well so I'm going to publish that one okay but then as I come down to the next part of the course um, which for you might be a sub module or it might be an actual module um, then I'm going to say I don't want them to be able to go straight onto that. I would like that one to release to them or drip on a schedule. I'm going to say, okay, that one with this particular mini course where we ran it over five consecutive days, I'm going to say, I would like this second part of the course to release on day two, which is going to be one day after they got access. So you can see the number of days until the module is released to the student. So done. Then we're going to say, okay, so module three, which is going to be day three, that's going to have to be two days after they get access to the course. Like this. And drip. One will be three days. And so on. Okay, so four days after they get access to the course is going to be day five which is where we cover the day five content. Now, the other thing that you need to know about how this drip calculates is, well, when does access start? Now, unless you set it up differently inside of the offer, the access to the product starts when somebody purchases it. So if you've got an evergreen course available, 
uh, on your Kajabi site and you're selling it all year round and you want people to jump into it straight away, if you set all of your modules or submodules to published, the day that they purchase that course is the day that they're going to be able to work through this content. So if you set some of the modules to drip, the day that they'll get day uh, this module two, in my instance, in this case, where I've set it to one day, that would be the day after they have purchased the course. So this stuff they would see straight away. And then module two, they would get a little notification from the system, um, letting them know that new content is available. That little notification would come out one day later, and then they get another notification the next day. Okay, so it is all going to be based around when they purchase the course unless you set it up differently inside of the offer. Now, if you want this first date, the date that they see module one, if you want that to be a specific date, that setting is set in the offer. So up here, you can see that attached to this product, I've got one offer. If I open it up, it's this one here. So we're in offers, we're in sales, we're in offers. We've got offers, template, uh, template mini course, that's what I called it. And you can see that this offer is connected to that product. Now, if you want the drip to be calculated off a specific date, then you would need to check this box here that says begin access at a specific date. Okay, If you don't check this box, they will see everything published the day that they purchase it. If you do check this box and you say, okay, I want people to... Uh, let's just say Monday the 28th is going to be day one of our training. So if I set this date in here, that means that once when they purchase this mini course from me, they'll be able to see it in the library. But when they click through into the course, they're not going to be able to see any of the module content until the date that I have set here. Oops, there. And any of the drips that I have set so drip one day, drip two days are going to calculate off of whatever I've put in this field. So I've said, okay, the 28th of August is going to be the start of our course for everyone, especially if it's like a live cohort where you've got everyone going through it together. So that means on the 28th of August, any, any modules set to published, people will see straight away. And then on the 29th of August, that's when they're going to get module two. On the 30th of August, that's when they're going to get module three and so on. Okay, so that is how the drip is calculated. Really important to understand that. It's either based on when somebody purchases, okay, when they initially buy this offer. Um, and we will talk about offers separately. Um, but when they initially purchase this offer from you, that's when their access starts, unless you have checked this box and put a date in here. Now, the date that you put in there, it can be in the past. So if I was to put in here, for example, the 20th, um, so like this, 20th, and somebody was to sign up a week after we all start the course, for example, let's just say they, they signed up, um, let's just say they signed up for your eight-week course one week late. So you had all your students going through your eight-week course. They all started on the 20th of August and you had someone who signed up on the 27th of August. The access date for that late person is actually going to get backdated to whatever you've put here so that they remain on the same schedule as the other students going through the training. Because if you have someone sign up late, you don't want them you know, getting the, the modules released to them out of sync with all the other students who are in that particular live cohort. Um, so just know you can have a date here that's actually in the past. And if somebody signs up for this offer and this date has already passed, in their, in their own account, they're going to have an access date that is backdated to the same date that everyone else has. So if they signed up on the 27th, for example, and the access date was the 20th, when they go and open the course product that you're creating, they'll be able to see, I mean, even if it says here drip one day, that drip would have already happened in the past. So they'd be able to, they, basically they can catch up. Okay, anything that is set to a drip, 
um, that's already happened in the past in their account is going to be showing as published. And if you've got any questions on that, I know that one takes a little bit to get your head around. Um, so if you've got any questions on product access dates, please let me know. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the notification that goes out. So if you want people to get a little system email each day that new content releases to them, down here inside of your site settings, there is actually a site setting for drip. So you make sure that you go into your drip settings and decide two things you need to decide. Firstly, what time of day do you want this new content to release to people? Uh, and do you want a system email to go out to them that tells them that the new content is available? Now, I would encourage you to keep that box checked on because even if you plan to send them a nice email broadcast out of your marketing emails, if for any reason they decide to unsubscribe from your mailing list, they're not going to get marketing emails, but they will always get this little system email going out to them. So I would leave this one switched on and then decide what time of day you want the content to drip. Um, over inside of the offer, you can see under the in this product access section inside of the offer, it actually says, okay, members will be given access to published content uh, at this date, and any drip categories will be made available each following day at 9 a.m. Eastern. And if I was to update in here this to 10 a.m., and save that and then come back into that offer and refresh it. And wait for it to do its thing. You can see now it's changed to 10 a.m. Eastern is when the content is releasing. And the other thing you can do, also important to note, is you could check on this box here and say, okay, their product access, they're buying this course, whatever it is, I don't want them to have lifetime access to it. I just want them to have access for X number of days. So, you know, a year or 30 days or seven days if it's a free mini course. So you can set the access in here. If for any reason you've set the access and somebody reaches out to you and they've got, you know, a great reason why they didn't get through it and you want to extend their access, you can do that on a student um, like case by case basis inside of their profile in their contacts. If you go and look them up, you'll be able to open up their purchase and extend their access to a date in the future if you need to. Okay, but also really useful, this checkbox here for restricting access to a set number of days. All right, so that's it for dripping content and also setting that product access date and the access duration. Now, I was going to cover locking inside of this tutorial, but I decided it really deserves its own because there's a couple of little different ways you could go about locking the content for your students. And that's what we'll get into next.